Jays on Sports Day. Presented by the all-new Honda Civic. Now available with Turbo. The 2016 North American Car of the Year. What a beautiful day in southern Ontario. Spring has definitely sprung. David Rogers Center, the opening game of a three game series between the visiting Los Angeles Dodgers and the Toronto Blue Jays. Dave Roberts, the first year manager of the Dodgers, a team that has struggled at home to score runs, but they've been very good scoring runs away from home. Add it all up, they're a 500 team, just like the Blue Jays. Adrian Gonzalez, one of the most consistent hitters in baseball over the last decade or so. He will anchor the lineup in the cleanup spot and then hitting fifth. Is Yasiel Puig and the Dodgers for the most part Buck pleased with Puig fewer mistakes a little bit more maturity they're hoping the talent can finally overcome some of the other issues that they've seen in the last two years. This is Puig's fourth season with the Dodgers. Marcus Stroman will make his seventh start of the season he's off to a great start at 4 0. ERA is a little bit higher than it should be the bullpen has coughed up seven of his runs after he has left the game. Forty three innings. Nobody's hitting much against him righties or lefties and his whip is under one. That's always a good thing for a starting pitcher. He's not allowing many base runners in each of his innings. Time for the Stroh show here at Rogers Center the first time the Blue Jays and Dodgers have played since 2013 when the Dodgers came here and swept a three game series a lot of different faces of course on both teams. Chase Utley 37 years old will lead it off for the Dodgers. Resigned to a one year deal in the offseason after coming over to the Dodgers late last year. And he'll take a belt high strike as we're underway. Well, at least in a little different role than the lineup prior to this season. He had let off just 11 times in his career tonight. This is the 20th start, top of the order for Utley. You saw the on base percentage, a very solid 388. The Dodgers didn't know what to do and they just kind of kept signing people. They brought Utley back. Later on, they brought Howie Kendrick back. So Kendrick's played some second, some third, some left field. He's the DH tonight. When Utley's in there, he's at second base. Strike at the knees and it's one and two. Dodgers, of course, getting their first look at Marcus Stroman. And Utley wanted to check out a few of those pitches. And he'll throw the kitchen sink at you. He Runs that fastball in, he'll sink it away, he cuts the ball inside, uses both of his breaking balls very effectively. He'll use his slider in these situations to get the lefties to swing over the top of it when it's down and in. Russell Martin doing the catching tonight, flashing the signs as the slider is taken down and in for ball two. Yeah, that's a pretty good chase pitch for Strowman with two strikes. He'll get hitters to See that breaking ball can't pick up the spin because it's so tight and they'll chase it. Utley, the expression never changes. He's very deliberate as a hitter and is pacing in and around the batter's box. And he swings through a cutter for strike three. <laughs> Defensively behind Stroman tonight. The usual trio in the outfield. Michael Saunders in left, Kevin Pilar in center, and Jose Bautista. In right on the infield, Josh Donaldson at third. A night off for Troy Tulowitzki. So Ryan Goen slides over to short for the second time this year. Darwin Barney in the lineup at second. Justin Smoke at first, and Russell Martin behind the plate. As Dan mentioned, Goen's making his second start of the season. Last year, he made 48 starts at shortstop. He is a natural shortstop, so he's quite comfortable when he gets on the third base side of the bag. The batter is Corey Seeger. One of the top young prospects in all of baseball. He's just turned 22 years of age. He came up last year with the Dodgers and in 98 at bats hit 337. He was a force. He's a big shortstop. But everybody talks not only about the talent, but about the maturity and the poise. His big brother, Kyle, of course, has been a member of the Mariners for a number of years. Corey is 6'4, 215. And they think the sky is the limit for him as Stroman and Martin both wanted that pitch but it's called outside. Well you mentioned the great year he had last year he had 13 extra base hits in just 27 games. On the appeal he went says Jim Joyce the crew chief down at third out number two. Well, we mentioned Stroman, and he has the ability to use all of his pitches anytime in the count. And you see what he throws 
this season. Slider, fastball, cutter, curveball, and changeup. He'll throw him any time in the count. And that time he threw that slider to Corey Seager and got him to swing and strike out. Back to back strikeouts for Stroman to start this game. Now Justin Turner, he lines the ball right back up the middle for a base hit. The former New York Met with all the big names they have on this roster. He has been the number three hit of the last couple of years. Uh, and deservedly so. Two years ago, in about 300 at bats, he hit 340, hit 294 last year. Nobody's really hitting great on the Dodgers right now. We mentioned they've been much better on the road than they have been at home. But they are just 10th out of 15 teams in the National League in runs per game this year. Yeah, everybody seems to be kind of sputtering out of the box for the Dodgers in their lineup. And even Adrian Gonzalez, he's hitting 282, but that's below his normal average. First pitch swinging and an easy ground ball out to Darwin Barney to end the inning. No runs, a base hit, and a man left. The Blue Jays coming up against Kenta Maeda when we come back. First inning as the Dodgers nothing across against Marcus Stroman in the top half of the inning. Let's take a look at the lineup. John Gibbons is sending out there tonight after that 12 run eruption last night. A 12 to 2 win over the Texas Rangers with Edwin Encarnacion driving in six of those runs. And whether he's been an American leaguer or a national leaguer in his career, he has loved interleague play. We'll see if that trend continues tonight. Justin Smoke, of course, the two big home runs on Tuesday night, playing regularly now. And looking to take advantage of that opportunity. 28 year old Kenta Maeda will go to the mound for the Dodgers to open up this series. This is his sixth start. He's put up good numbers to start his major league career. Left handers hitting just 182 against him, and that reflects the fact that he can locate that fastball on the outer part of the plate. He's got a great changeup. He'll use that to neutralize those lefty bats, and his whip, like Stroman, under one. Eight years in Japan, a very successful career there, including twice winning the equivalent of the of the rough equivalent of the Cy Young Award. And he's off to a very good start here in the major leagues as Michael Saunders leads it off and takes just outside ball one. Saunders, Donaldson, and Bautista here in the first inning. Saunders just a tick under 300 at 299, four home runs. See good on base percentage, slugging the OPS well over 900 right now. Slow breaking ball. That curveball is a big pitch for Maeda when he can flip in there for a strike almost at will. Of the five starts that he has had, he gave up four earned runs in the last start. So he gave up only one run in his first four starts total against San Diego, Arizona, San Francisco, and Colorado, four division rivals. And even with giving up four runs in his last start, Five runs and five starts. That's the second best start in Dodger history behind only Fernando Valenzuela, who in 1981, as you well recall, got off to the about as good a start as a pitcher can in his big league career. Created Fernando Mania yes. in Southern California, that's for sure. Swing and a miss at the slider for strike three. Let's take a look at the defense behind the Kenta Maeda. Carl Crawford, who really got a start in Tampa Bay, was a terrific player for Tampa Bay, hasn't captured that 
Same level of performance since. Jock Peterson in center and Yashiel Puig in right. On the infield, it's Turner, Seager, Utley, and Gonzalez from third to first behind the plate. That's Manny Grandal and Pinta Maeda on the mound. Yasiel Puig is one of the most physically talented players in the entire major leagues, but as Dan mentioned earlier, he's just now starting to rein in his skills and developing a little more maturity, and the Dodgers are pleased about that. The power is there, the arm strength is certainly there. Making fewer mistakes, trying to show off the arm a little bit less often when it's not needed. Strike zone. Recognition has always been a problem for Puig. Can he stop chasing pitches outside of the zone? We'll see if Stroman can exploit that tonight. Josh Donaldson is the batter. No score here in the bottom of the first. The infielders with a shift on. Three on the left side of second base against Donaldson. And the 2 0 up and in. And a running fastball, ball three. Maeda was asked about the difference of pitching in the major leagues compared to those eight seasons in Japan. He says the batters swing harder. They have a different approach. They're trying to hit extra base hits on every swing. And he has been very quick to pick up on that. He said in Japan, most of the guys think about making contact first. When you think of a, a lot of the pitchers who have come over from Japan, Tanaka Iwakuma being two of them, the splitter is a tremendously important pitch, but Maeda doesn't throw a splitter. Yeah, it was big for Tanaka, of course, but you see the fastball 43%, and then it's balanced pretty well between the slider, curveball, and changeup. So he's going to use those combination off speed pitches to complement that fastball. Donaldson is running and steals second base. Bautista looked like he was taking all the way. It was a breaking ball, and that helped Donaldson steal second rather easily. Well, it was a slow curveball, very good pitch to run on. Donaldson got a walking lead. Maeda never looked at him, and Bautista didn't even take the bat off his shoulder. Second stolen base of the season for Donaldson. And a runner in scoring position with one down for Bautista. Curveball right over the outside edge. Bautista shows his displeasure, and the count is now 0 2. You picked up on that. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> it's subtle, <laughs> but I'm pretty perceptive. Yeah, very yeah. good. Yeah. <laughs> he wasn't too pleased with that last call yeah. from Marvin Hudson. <laughs> 0 and 2 the count. Clayton Kershaw among those leaning over the railing on the Dodgers side of the field. Kershaw will get the start tomorrow afternoon. The Blue Jays are going to have to really be patient on the two strike counts because Maeda will rarely throw the ball over the plate. You might even have to scoot a little closer to the plate because he's going to try to get you to chase that slider off the plate or spot the fastball away but rarely does he throw a pitch in the strike zone once he gets to two strikes he wants you to chase. Pitch is high, two and two. As we take a look at Kenta Maeda's success so far this year, based on the situation, he's only given up one hit in the first inning this year. This is his sixth start of the year. He has not given up a run in the first inning. And when you see the scoring position and the scoring position with two out numbers, so you can you can bend them, but you can't break them very easily. Yeah, I think that reflects the fact, as I mentioned, he's got over 1,500 innings of experience in Japan. So even though he's a major league rookie, he is anything but. And he's important to this team. Zach Greinke's now an Arizona Diamondback. I mean, they had a great one-two combination, the best in baseball last year, with Kershaw and Greinke. Greinke went to the Diamondbacks for huge money, and they signed Maeda and Scott Casimir, hoping to buff up that rotation a little bit. Casimir's not off to a good start. They've got three starting pitchers on the disabled list right now. So Maeda right now, in effect, would be their number two guy. Back of third, Seeger the shortstop will make the catch in fair territory down the line for out number two. 
Well, the Dodgers began the year with 10 players on the DL, including a number of pitchers that they thought had a chance to be in their starting rotation. Without question, Jin Ryu still trying to come back from shoulder surgery last year. It's going slowly. He's just now started on rehab. Brandon McCarthy, Tommy John, done for the year. Brett Anderson, back surgery, likely done for the year. Uh, a lot of money invested in those guys. So Dave Roberts has Kershaw. He has obviously Maeda tonight, Kazmir. The, the Dodgers have always been associated with great starting pitching. I mean, going back generation uh, after generation. And this guy is still the gold standard. Yeah, he is. He's maybe the best pitcher in all of baseball, and he has been for quite a while. But the Dodgers have always been seven and eight deep in starting pitchers, and they've got three of their projected starters on the DL. Yeah, Alex Wood is also in the rotation, one and three with a 518 ERA. Kazmir's at 568. And then rookie Ross Stripling, who came out of nowhere to earn a spot in the rotation. What a play down at third. Justin Turner robs Edwin Encarnacion of an extra base hit and robs the Blue Jays of what would have been a run. Terrific play. Maeda, he's going to meet him right out in front of the mound to thank him for that defense as Turner, with great reactions at third base, diving to his right and making the backhanded catch to end the inning. This Marcus Stroman start is brought to you by BioSteel Sports Nutrition, the natural choice for everyday performance. Drink the pink. Top second in this Marcus Stroman start here at Rogers Center. Dan Schulman to Buck Martinez. No score between the Blue Jays and the Dodgers. Stroman gave up a base hit, nothing more in the first. And now faces Yasiel Puig in the second. A ground ball to Goins at short. One pitch, one out, and that's. What Stroman wants pitching to contact more two seam fastballs not worried about the strikeouts wants to get deep into the game. Meanwhile Yasiel Puig I don't know what you did this morning and I know it what I did this. this morning but it wasn't well you've done this though. I have you've done, done, this. done this. That's the edge walk yeah. on the CN Tower and Yasiel Puig's had a couple of interesting days here in Toronto. On the off day Thursday he went fishing with some teammates and they caught some salmon out on Lake Ontario and and this morning he was up on the CN Tower doing the edge walk. Blue Jays are probably going to give him a list of other things to yeah. do in the next couple of days, see if they can keep him busy. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you should go to the aquarium yeah. and you should go to the ROM, and there's other yeah. things to do. I'll get him on some roller coasters up in Wonderland or something. Or there's Yasmani Grandal, the Dodger catcher, hitting 292 on the season. A late start to the season because of a forearm injury. Not just starting pitchers who are out for the Dodgers. Grandal strikes out two down. Boy, Stroman looks sharp early. Grandal was out with a forearm injury. Uh, their number one catcher. As you take a look at Stroman, getting ahead of hitters and putting them away quickly. Yeah, and he has such a knack for making adjustments and having very quick innings. Once he sees something is working especially well, he'll go right to it, pitch after pitch. 
Here's another Dodger who started the year on the DL. Howie Kendrick. This is part of Kenta Maeda's routine between innings. Keeping himself loose. Kendrick had a strained left calf. He missed the first 10 days or so of the season. Andre Ethier is out for a while. Broken right tibia. Foul with the ball off his shin. He's out for perhaps half the season. Here's a chopper toward third. Donaldson tricky play and throws it by Smoke. Kendrick safely across and now scampers back to first base. Josh got in between as far as how he was going to catch this ball. I think he was dealing with the lights. He turned his glove like he was going to backhand it and then he had to catch it with the palm up. And that threw him off stride and he misses by a wide margin at first. You don't see that very often from Donaldson. But you see how he was going to backhand then decided to go palm up and when he made the throw it was too late the first. Scored an infield hit for Kendrick. And that'll bring up the center fielder Jock Peterson hitting 265 four home runs. Peterson had two seasons rolled into one last year first two and a half months or so. He was unbelievable he hit for a decent average and he hit a ton of home runs. He went to the All Star game last year and he competed in the home run derby. But then in the second half of the season he hardly hit at all and he wound up hitting just 210 on the season. The strikeouts will always be high. But this young man has big power to any part of any field. He was tied with. Chris Bryant of the Cubs for the most home runs in the National League by a rookie. And he's got big power, as you mentioned, and his last 15 games, a little more consistency. I think that's what the Dodgers want to see from Jock Peterson. Shift on for the Blue Jays. 1 1 from Stroman. And it's in there for a cold strike, says Marvin Hudson. 1 and 2. It's interesting the Dodgers first time through the order against Stroman. They've gone up there aggressive on the first pitch. So he's going to have to pick up on that. He can start him off with breaking balls. He can start him off with changeup, for that matter. Or he can locate his fastball very effectively on the first pitch. One, two. Got it. Two good innings for Marcus Stroman. Four strikeouts already. He's needed only 24 pitches to get the first six outs. Pitchers have a lot of parts to their delivery. They pause in the windup. They hesitate a little when they lift their leg. While Kenta Maeda's delivery isn't as pronounced or extreme as, say, a uh, Nomo or Matsuzaka. He is more of a command guy. But any variation in that delivery could potentially throw off a hitter's timing. Ryan Goins told me that what he does is look from the on deck circle. He focuses on the hitter in front of him, pays attention to the pitcher in the stretch, in the windup, and see where his release point is. He tries to mimic and visualize what it would be like once he's in the box. Now the pitcher may vary that delivery from hitter to hitter, but generally, Dan, you try and incorporate any sort of pause into your approach. Hazel, thank you very much. By Japanese standards, as Hazel mentioned, Maeda does not have a lot of extra stuff going on in his delivery, but it's still more than your typical major league. Yeah, there's a little hesitation, but it's not as dramatic. We even saw Tony 
Barnett who pitched for the Rangers who had spent six years in Japan he had a very distinctive pause but you can see that's a fairly fluid delivery as Maeda delivers that first pitch to smoke smoke at first base again leading off the second inning 264 with a couple of home runs both of them on Tuesday against Texas maybe the biggest win the Blue Jays have had this season having lost the first game they were down one to nothing going to the bottom of the ninth. Backdoor breaking ball there to even up the count at one and one. The Red Sox and Yankees are playing again this weekend as they did last weekend. This weekend they're in the Bronx and the Red Sox are off to an early start. They got two in the top of the first. David Ortiz homering off Michael Pineda. Ortiz is now hitting 326 buck with seven home runs as a 40 year old. Yeah and people have asked him already might you reconsider but he has said time and time again this is it. He's going to the ranch after this season <laughs> and getting some gifts getting some parting gifts as he goes around baseball. Red Sox are in the lead in the East at 17 and 11 the Orioles a half game back the Blue Jays sit in third three games back. See Maeda got that fastball by smoke and it's 90 miles an hour. So I think you just have to make up your mind you're going to hit a fastball you got to get ready for it and it's not going to be an overpowering pitch. Again with two strikes he rarely throws a pitch in the strike zone. Kevin Pilar waiting in the on deck circle. Pilar moving up a spot in the order. Troy Tulowitzki getting the night off Goins at short Barney at second they're batting eighth and ninth respectively. Three two. That might have been borderline but it was with two strikes and close so smoke's got to fight it off. But he throws a little slider there gets it down around the label. Just a day off for Tulowitzki John Gibbons says he'll be back in there he says the plan always when they acquired him was to give him a day every now and again to keep him fresh. This is the second time this season he's been out of the starting lineup. Outside ball four. Blue Jays Rogers 4K broadcast is powered by the Samsung 4K SUHD TV. Lead off man aboard for the Blue Jays here in the bottom of the second. Justin Smoke drawing a walk, and the batter is Kevin Pillar, hitting 409 over his last 12 games, hitting 297 overall. At three hits, including a couple of doubles last night against the Rangers. As we mentioned a big big Dodger fan growing up grew up about 30 miles north of Dodger Stadium said Mike Piazza and Eric Karros were his two favorite players when he was a kid. But even as an 18 19 year old starting to go to college before he became a professional player that guy right there Russell Martin who was a Dodger then was one of Pilar's favorites and then lo and behold a few years later he's teammates with him here in Toronto. Yeah Russell began his big league career with the Dodgers from 2006 to 2010. In fact he had his best year in a Dodger uniform 2007 he was a two time all star as a Dodger won a gold glove and a silver slugger award. Here's the O2. And Pilar chases down and away. Maeda strikes him out. That's his money pitch right there. That slider down and away. He starts it on the plate. It breaks off the plate. Again, Blue Jays might have to make an adjustment. Get up on top of the plate a little bit. Watch this tight spin. You can see that red dot on that baseball. That's what hitters are looking for to give them the red flag that that is a slider. But when it's so tight like that, it's very difficult to pick up that spinning red dot. So with the one out here's Russell Martin swinging the bat better in recent days he's up the average to 187 takes just off the outside edge for ball one Martin will not be in the lineup tomorrow because R.A. Dickey is pitching which means Josh Tolley is catching which means Josh Tolley will be hitting off Clayton Kershaw as he did against Chris Sale Tolley catches when Dickey pitches so he's had to deal with some of the toughest lefties in baseball and Martin and Kershaw being former teammates 
Martin would love to get a chance to get in there and swing the bat against Kershaw if he could tomorrow, but it didn't work out that well, way. Well, that has something to do with why Goins is playing tonight and Tulowitzki will play tomorrow, so you can make up for Russell's bat being out of line by putting Tulowitzki back in there. 2 0. I know there are a lot of armchair quarterbacks who think managers just kind of arbitrarily make up the lineup, but they put some thought into it. <laughs> Different game, a little bit different game here in the American League. Probably a little bit more thought goes into it in the National League. And the Blue Jays with fewer moving parts than most American League teams, even. You'll see some big swings against Maeda. They see it, they think they've got it, but they don't come up with it. He's tricky. Well, that was what was so good about the Blue Jays last night when they had a season high in runs and hits. They went the other way. They stayed on the ball away, and they're going to have to make an adjustment against Maeda, or he'll live out there all night long. Same pitch and same result that he got Pilar with. Two down in the inning. Blue Jays made a roster move today. They wanted to get another position player back on the roster. They called Andy Burns up from Triple A Buffalo. He can play second, short, third. They're going to a National League Park in San Francisco Monday for a three game series with the Giants. You always want a little bit more on your bench when you go into the National League. So Ryan Tapera was sent back down to Buffalo, and the Blue Jays are back down to a seven man bullpen. Now. This is Andy Burns' first day in the big leagues. Mm -hmm. Originally drafted by the Blue Jays. He's 25 years old, and he's a versatile guy. Had a good spring. Ryan Goins' first pitch swinging lifts a fly ball into very shallow left center field. And the catch will be made by Carl Crawford to end the inning. So a leadoff walk, but nothing more. No score at the end of two. Enter the McCarty Blue Jays for a day contest for a chance to win a great Blue Jays on field experience. For details, entry form, and rules, go to bluejays.com slash McCarty contest. The contest closes Thursday, June 30th at 4.59 p.m. Dan. Thank you, Hazel. Top third here at Rogers Center. No score between the Dodgers and Blue Jays in the opening game of this three-game series. And a very familiar face to the Blue Jays and their fans, Carl Crawford. We'll lead it off. First pitch swinging. That's over Donaldson's head, and Goins won't have a play. Crawford aboard with an infield hit. It's time to convert your big outdoor tasks into short, effortless work. Make the great outdoors even greater with Honda Power Equipment. I don't think Ryan Goins had a grip on that baseball and he chose not to throw it and that was a good decision Crawford runs well and if you're not sure about where the ball is going to end up you're better off just to put it in your pocket. Crawford a little bit older now has battled a number of hamstring injuries over the years had some back trouble earlier this year does not run as much as a Dodger. 
as he did back in his formative years with the Rays. I mean, the Blue Jays know all about that. He was a he was a menace for the Blue Jays for a number of years. Stole as many as 60 bases in a season with Tampa Bay. Last year in 69 games, he stole 10 bases in 12 attempts. Back to the top of the order for Chase Utley. There's some older players on this team Crawford and Utley and Kendrick. There goes Crawford. Throw down is in time to get him. Russell Martin made a terrific throw, and he has not thrown as well early in the season as he did last year. He was best in baseball last year, but he makes a terrific throw here to gun down Carl Crawford. Just the third base dealer he's thrown out this season in 11 attempts, but he throws a strike. Crawford got a good start. It's a straight steal. No look in to see what the batter's doing, and Goins comes into the baseline to put the tag on Crawford before he gets to second. Marcus Stroman pumped up with the defense. One down and a one and one count now on Utley. Was thinking about bunting his way aboard with the shift on and Donaldson well off the line, but he bunted right through it. We yeah. mentioned he is hitting in the leadoff spot quite often for the Dodgers, and he's always been middle of the order guy in his career. And now a little different profile for Utley, top of the order. And a swing and a miss. Strikeout number five for Marcus Stroman. Another slider, and he really has a lot of confidence that he can throw it to left handed hitters. He starts it on the inner half of the plate, and the spin takes it down underneath the bat. You can see Utley misses it. He's out in front and over the top of that slider. So with two down, nobody on. Now Corey Seeger, who struck out his first time up. Boy, the Dodgers continue to wail away at that first pitch. Sure looked like he did. And yes, he did, says Marvin Hudson. It's 0 2. Stroman has thrown a first pitch strike to 10 of the 11 hitters he has faced. Little hesitation there. That's something that Marcus will mess with every now and again. You might not see it for a couple of starts, but he's got a little quick pitch in him every now and again and a little hesitation in him every now and again. Working very quickly. Just like Hazel May told us about Maeda and the Japanese pitchers, when you hesitate as a starter, you disrupt the timing of a hitter. And Marcus doesn't do it all the time, but he's talked to hitters about how that can affect them at the plate. Outside and a full count. We've seen Johnny Cueto use a very abbreviated delivery from time to time, very effectively. A little bit high for ball four. First walk given up tonight by Stroman. So with two outs, Seeger at first, and that'll bring up Justin Turner. Turner lined the base into center field on the first pitch he saw from Stroman back in the first inning. He's a guy that Dave Roberts, the, the manager of the Dodgers, wants to give a day off to. Every few days they don't want him to wear down they feel he's better off playing maybe five days a week than six or seven. And maybe a cross up there is that boxed up Martin it is a strike it was right down the middle. The runner won't advance and we'll see if Martin and Stroman have a conversation. Boy, the Blue Jays got a break there's no reason in the world why Corey Seager shouldn't be at second base. Yep. He may have thought it was a foul tip. But you watch Russell Martin's reaction as Stroman throws this pitch. And then Russell got fooled. He got handcuffed by it. And watch Seeger the runner. He's not really sure. I think he thought it was a foul tip the way it came out of Russell's glove. Curveball swing and a miss. 0 and 2. There are many pitchers Stroman's age who mix their pitches. As extensively and effectively as he does. Oh, two on the way, down and away, ball one. 
Yeah, and now he's got him in a situation where he can run that fastball inside. We saw him do it against Tampa Bay, where he cut the fastball inside to right-handed hitters, and it was a very effective pitch for him. He's got Turner thinking about the outside part of the plate right now. Got it. Six strikeouts through three innings for Marcus Stroman, and this game remains scoreless. DeMar DeRozan and company take their talents to South Beach to continue their quest for playoff glory against Dwayne Wade and Miami. That's Saturday at 4.30 Eastern, 1.30 Pacific, right here on Sportsnet. Crazy start to that series. Couple of overtime games, each team winning once. Game three tomorrow. Game one of this series here tonight. No score between the Dodgers and Blue Jays as Maeda starts Darwin Barney with a strike. Darwin Barney spent parts of two seasons with the Dodgers. Last year he got into two games, but in 14 he played in 22 games after going to the Dodgers from the Cubs. Boy, Maeda is going to be tough if he gets that call. The, the Blue Jays have chased breaking balls down and away. That one appeared to be a little bit further down and away. Barney took it, and it was a called strike. Now he's in the hole 0 and 2. Boy, he he knows he's putting the ball right where he wants to put exactly, the ball. Yep. and that's how he has to pitch. He understands that the hitters in the major leagues have more power than he's used to facing while pitching in Japan. So he's going to keep the ball off the plate. This is all by design. Shot the other way, a fair ball. Puig will pick it up and right. Got a strong arm. And he throws him out at second. Yasiel Pui firing a tremendous throw to second base to get Barney trying to stretch it into a double. That's his fourth outfield assist of the season, and this is a terrific throw. He bare hands it, throws it on the fly right to the shortstop Seager, who is waiting for Barney. What a terrific play by Puig, who's making his first start on this diamond plays it off the wall and Darwin Barney is tagged out and he puts that tag right on his right hand much to the delight of Kenta Maeda fourth outfield assist of the season as Buck mentioned 25th of his career that was the first hit of the night for the Blue Jays here's Michael Saunders who struck out back in the first. Well, Yasiel Pui, you might have seen this highlight a little bit earlier in the season. Check out the distance on this throw. Just From short of the warning track, he airmails it all the way to third base, and Justin Turner 
You get Trevor Story sliding in head first. He's got one of the strongest arms in all of baseball, and he's learning to use it a little more effectively with each season he plays. Upstairs, taken for ball one. A lot of the Dodger people, Jaime Harin, the longtime Spanish broadcaster for the Dodgers, compares Puig to Raul Mondesi, who played here with the Blue Jays, of course, but started his career with the Dodgers. Same type of raw talent, but I think Mondesi was much more consistent than Puig has been to this point of his career. Slow curveball down to 71 miles an hour, taken low. Barney thrown out trying to stretch it into a double. Two and two now the count on Saunders with Donaldson waiting on deck. And the pitch way down and in. You know you get a leadoff hit down the right field line in the scoreless game and the first base coach will tell you you got to go make him throw you out. And he did. But that's a very high percentage gamble and he threw a strike. I mean he threw it right on top of the yep. base. Popped up left side. Turner into foul territory makes the catch and Saunders retired two down. Super slow mo cam. Brought to you by Rogers 4K TV. Get closer to the action with four times the resolution of HD alone. So Maeda sailing along two and two thirds. He's given up one hit, two walks, but no runs. Both he and Stroman sharp in the early going. And here's Donaldson who walked and then surprised the Dodgers by stealing a base on the first pitch. Clayton Kershaw will get the start tomorrow afternoon for the Dodgers against R.A. Dickey. And then Ross Stripling, a rookie, taking on Marco Estrada on Sunday in the finale. Then the Blue Jays head west and start a three game series against the San Francisco Giants. And they are scheduled to face Madison Bumgarner in that series. He's supposed to start the last game on Wednesday. He's on the mound for the Giants tonight. That'll be Stroman and Bumgarner That's on Wednesday good. afternoon. Marvin Hudson had to think a long time about that pitch. And Josh Donaldson is a little surprised about the timing of that called strike. But Hudson thought about it for a second and said, Yeah, that's a strike. It was a changeup that hung inside. 2 1. Curveball grounded deep in the hole at short. Seeger's got a strong arm. Dug out nicely by Gonzalez at first. And the inning is over. So good D by Gonzalez. A great throw by Puig. The Dodgers helping out Kenta Maeda so far here tonight. And at the end of three at Rogers Center, it remains scoreless here between the Dodgers and the Blue Jays. Here comes the ultimate cleanup crew brought to you by Home Hardware's exclusive line of the ultimate hard hitting and tough on grime cleaning products.
Jays. New 2016 authentic jersey with 40th season sleeve patch available now. Get yours today at jshop.ca. Top four at Rogers Center, a scoreless game. Between the Dodgers and the Blue Jays, both Marcus Stroman and Kenta Maeda pitching well. Stroman will face the four, five, and six hitters Adrian Gonzalez, Yasiel Puig, and Yasmani Grandal. You know, we talked a lot about Maeda and Kershaw, how they have pitched so well. They are six in two in their 11 games that they have started. Well, Marcus Stroman and Jay Happ, they're 8 0. They've gotten off to a great start. Of course, that's Marco Estrada explaining his great changeup, and anybody that can teach it like that, Jay Happ's changeup has really gotten good. I'm talking about pronating that changeup and getting some movement down and away. And that has been the bread and butter pitch for Estrada, and that's the one thing everybody always talks about as pitchers. Pat Henkin did it for years. How do you hold your changeup? How do you hold your changeup? It's always a mystery to get the changeup. Well, they should just keep talking because whatever they're doing has been working well recently. It's amazing how much pitchers talk about pitching with one another. You'd think these guys would have had all the conversations they could have had about a changeup by now, but they just keep talking to each well, other. Well, and you remember the great pictures we used to see in the heyday of the Atlanta Braves. It was Smoltz, Glavin, yep. and Maddox sitting at the top step talking about getting hitters out every day. Barney charges, flips to first, one down. Meanwhile, R.A. Dickey sitting off on the side saying, anybody want to learn how to throw a knuckleball? I got a knuckleball. <laughs> He's not really a, as much a part of the conversation. No, and it's very, very difficult because it's taken him so long to master it, and it's just such a finicky pitch that we have seen it come and go for R.A., but now he's in the time of the season where generally that knuckleball becomes more consistent for him. Jay Happ, what a start he is off to, 4-0, as we mentioned. Happens Strowman are the first Blue Jays to start off 4-0 since 1984, when Dave, Steve, and Louis Leal both got off to a 4-0 start. That was a good rotation the Blue Jays had back in the mid 80s. Had a great catcher. Ernie was really good. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to let you just keep driving that bus. Oh, no, take no. it wherever you wanted to. <laughs> What a great platoon you and Ernie formed back in those days. So it was Steve, yeah, Steve Clancy Leal got. Was that the foursome for a couple years? No, it would have been Alexander. Alexander, right? Yeah. Terrific. We takes just down and away ball three. Grounded out his first time up. But has made the play of the game. Throwing out Darwin Barney trying to stretch a single into a double. Yes he did and he's upset with himself that he did. Yeah you can see all those pitches the first four down and away and that last one up and in really surprised him. He was looking away and got beat by that inside pitch. And now another grounder to short. Big hop for Goins two down. Save during the Lawn and Garden Expert Sale. Only at Home Hardware and Home Hardware Building Center. Homeowners helping homeowners with expert advice. Two down in the inning as they keep popping the popcorn here at Rogers Center. No score. Top of the fourth inning between the Dodgers and the Blue Jays. And the batter will be the catcher, Yasmani Grandal, who struck out his first time up. There has not been a fly ball out hit by the Dodgers yet. Every out has been either a strikeout, a ground out, or in the case of Carl Crawford, he was thrown out trying to steal. It's a pretty good way to pitch. Yep. I have not seen ground balls go out of the stadium. Strikeouts and grounders, that's a great formula. There and are Marcus seems to have the ability to understand when to go for a strikeout and when to just to take something off and get that ground ball. Line drive. Caught by Goins to end the inning. 
Three up, three down go the Dodgers. We're going to the bottom of the fourth here in Toronto. It'll be Jose Bautista, Edwin Encarnacion, and Justin Smoke coming up for the Blue Jays. Jays Care Broadcast Auction presented by TD will take place during Sportsnet's national broadcast of the Blue Jays and the Tampa Bay Rays on May 18th. 12 unique Blue Jays experiences and packages up for bids. Visit BlueJays.com slash broadcast auction to see a list of all prizes available. All funds will help Jays Care go beyond the ballpark for over 62,000 children and youth across Canada in 2016. Dan. Hazel, thank you. Great night for a great cause. Going to the bottom of the fourth. No score. Dodgers and Blue Jays. Jose Bautista will lead it off against Kenta Maeda. Bautista popped up his first time up. He'll be followed by Encarnacion and then Smoke. Blue Jays have one hit. They've been issued two walks so far. Curveball for a strike. As we mentioned, he'll throw it. In any count, confident he can throw it for a strike. Down the right field line, heading foul and dropping before Puig could get over there. One and two after that check swing by Bautista. Always tough the first time you, you see a pitcher. Before every series, the hitters will go in and have a meeting, as the Blue Jays did today, and they'll watch some video or get a little lecture about the pitcher they're going to see. Yeah, and it's up to the hitting coaches and the video coordinator to look at the raw video. And they'll look at numbers and they'll look at every pitch. Brooke Jacoby has a sheet on each pitcher, and he'll go over individually with the hitters, and Eric Owens will do the same and say, okay, here's what you can expect. From what he has done in his first five starts, he stays away. And he likes to throw that slider with two strikes to the right handed batters. Yeah, and he's very rarely throwing a pitch over the strike zone with two strikes, but you know, obviously, you have to protect those borderline pitches. Actually left that one over the plate, but Bautista pops it up for Adriana Gonzalez. Kenta Maeda, we mentioned he pitched eight years in Japan and he pitched for the Hiroshima Carp. 2008, he was a 20 year old rookie that went nine and two. And for his career, he was 30 games over 500. As Dan mentioned earlier, he won the equivalent of the Cy Young Award twice in his career. And he has just been a dominant pitcher. You see, that number 18 in Japan signifies the number one pitcher on each team. And during the WBC in 2013, Maeda wore number 18 
and Tanaka wore number 19. So Maeda was thought to be the number one pitcher of that national team for Japan during the WBC. We haven't seen him have to field his position yet, but he's also a five time winner of the equivalent of the gold glove in Japan. And he may not be the guy that Encarnacion is going to enjoy facing. The way he's just moving that slider off the outside corner and the way that Encarnacion is trying to pull it, although Edwin did line a ball sharply down to third his first time out. Now they're going way outside. Well, I have seen Japanese baseball and how they train, and, and it's over and over and over. It's repetition, and they might only pitch once a week in a game. But they'll throw two or three times in between to really refine their delivery and their mechanics. You remember when Daisuke Matsuzaka first joined the Red Sox, they really had to do a number on him trying to limit the amount of pitches he would throw because he wanted to throw almost every day off the mound just to make sure his delivery was intact. At the time, John Farrell was the pitching coach for the Red Sox. 2 2. Pulled down to third. Scooped up by Turner. Two down. Well, another nice moment for Maeda in his major league career. Came in his first start against the San Diego Padres. Yeah, he did well on the mound. But check out this. This was his second at bat of the major leagues. He hit two home runs in his career in Japan. And in his second at bat of the big leagues, he hit a home run. And look at the dugout. I mean, they went nuts. They were so excited. Maeda couldn't help but smile as he rounded the bases. And they couldn't even bear to give him the silent treatment. They liked him too much. <laughs> they were so excited for him. And it was really unexpected, obviously, when you're up against Andrew Kashner and the Padres. He hit one out of San Diego. It's a pretty big ballpark. Yep. Here's smoke. Curveball for a strike. Smoke walked his first time up. No runs, three hits for the Dodgers, no runs, just one hit for the Blue Jays. Chases down and in and in the hole 0 and 2. All week long, the Blue Jays have been playing National League style baseball, except for yesterday when they scored 12 runs, but runs have been tough for them to come by recently, and they were fortunate to win three or four against Texas. Yankees have tied it up with the Red Sox at two. They got a run on the first and a run on the second. Rick Porcello and Michael Pineda, the pitching matchup, so it's 2 2 in that game. Good pitching matchup in Detroit tonight. Cole Hamels for the Rangers, Jordan Zimmerman for the Tigers. The Rangers are up 2 to nothing in the bottom of the fourth. Down the left field line. Crawford into foul territory has room and that's the inning three up and three down go the Blue Jays now time for a Blue Jays central update here are Jamie Campbell and Greg Zahn from the Samsung broadcast studio.
Sportsnet. Sportsnet is providing fans with the opportunity to win a trip to the Stanley Cup Finals. We're giving away a pair of tickets, including flights and accommodation, inside every series of the Stanley Cup playoffs. The more you watch, the more chances to win. Capture the Cup with Sportsnet. Thank you, Hazel. We go to the top of the fifth here at Rogers Center. Still no score. Kenta Maeda and Marcus Stroman both pitching very well. Three hits for the Dodgers, just one for the Blue Jays. Bottom third of the order for L.A., beginning with the D.H. tonight, Howie Kendrick. Kendrick aboard on an infield hit his first time up. Two of the three hits the Dodgers have have been infield hits. The only hard hit ball was off the bat of Justin Turner. Nice stop by Barney. Sets his feet, throws him out. He did a perfect description of that play, Dan, because he did, once he gloved it, he took his time to get his right foot behind him, and there's no urgency in his approach at all. Watch how he sets that right foot. Now he's got plenty of time to make a strong and accurate throw to first, and that's how you make plays when you're a former gold glover. No panic. Once he got to it and made the backhand, he knew it was academic. So one down on the fifth. Here's Jock Peterson. Struck out his first time up. Stroman with six strikeouts on the night had two in each of the first three innings. And still not an out to the outfield. The only ball that's gotten to the outfield is the base hit by Turner in the first. This is the seventh start of the season for Marcus Stroman. He is 4 0. He has not suffered a loss. Since 2014. Now, granted, he missed almost all of last season, but he did make uh, a handful of starts at the end of the season and into the playoffs. He is 9 0 in his last 14 starts. The, the Blue Jay record for most consecutive starts without suffering a loss is 20, held by Roy Halladay in 2003. Strowman's extends over a couple of seasons and includes the playoffs. And now, Strowman. Talking to himself a little bit after missing badly up and away. He's got his breathing techniques and all, all sorts of rituals between pitches to try to get himself locked in again. Laid off that slide at that time. Jim Joyce down to thirds and no swing. I asked Marcus about his side session between starts. He said, All I do is get my body going again. He said, I'm not really refining my pitches or working on anything. I just want to get out there and get a good workout. He said, I feel like I can manage my pitches during the course of a game and make the adjustments as necessary. Swing and a miss, strikeout number seven. During the Lawn and Garden Expert Sale, only at Home Hardware and Home Hardware Building Center. Homeowners helping homeowners with expert advice. Two down in the inning and six in a row set down by Stroman. Here's Crawford. Reached on an infield hit and then was thrown out trying to steal back in the third inning. The Dodgers the last few years have always seemed to have, to have too many outfielders. Four guys for three spots, but unfortunately for them, it always seems to have a way of working itself out because somebody gets hurt. Whether it's Crawford, right now it's Andre Ethier out for a long time. Scott Van Slyke yep. on also the on well. the deal. Yeah, you go into a season with a definitive plan and then players suffer injuries and you have to regroup a bit. They have the largest payroll in baseball. They are the three time defending National League West Division champs, but they haven't had as much success in the playoffs as they would like. Dave Roberts taking over for Don Mattingly as the manager this year. Mattingly now in Miami. Another routine play for Barney, and another three up, three down inning for Stroman to the bottom of the fifth. Still no score.
game chairs in the TD Comfort Zone are guests of TD who've received an in-stadium seat upgrade. While over in the Jays Care Community Clubhouse, we welcome fans from Success Beyond Limits. Hello, everybody. Enjoy the ball game. They are, but they they love some offense here in the bottom of the fifth inning. No score between the Dodgers and the Blue Jays. Kevin Pillar, Russell Martin, and Ryan Goins coming up. Second time through the order for Kenta Maeda. Pilar struck out his first time up. Curveball down and away for ball one. Maeda worked Pilar down and away with those sliders, and he kept throwing it just farther and farther off the plate. And that looked like a fastball until the last second, and then it just kind of disappeared on Pilar. One ball and one strike. Josh Donaldson always talking about pitching, what he's dealing with, what he has to look for, how he can succeed in his next at bat. Maeda gets a call, and it's one and two. Yeah, he sure did, Grand Dog. Jerk that ball back over toward the plate. And for me, anytime a catcher has to move his glove that dramatically, that should be a red flag to an umpire that suggests, hey, catcher doesn't think it's any good. Coming inside. Every pitch he throws has a purpose. And he rarely elevates a pitch. Everything is down, and that pitch missed badly with no intent whatsoever of getting a result. Now watch this breaking ball down and away. Left it up just a bit but still gets a ground ball to second for the first out of the inning. Let's check in with Jamie Campbell. Ackley saved a home run last night. He took a home run away from Matt Wieters in that Baltimore game, and he has been pressed into service tonight. Here's Russell Martin. There was one game played this afternoon in the majors. That's the usual Friday afternoon home game for the Cubs. Whenever they're home on a Friday, it's always a day game, and they won again. Beat the Nationals again. Eight to six today. Ben Zobrist hit a couple of home runs today for Chicago. The Cubs are now 22 and 6. They've taken the first two games of that series from Washington. Well, pretty soon we're going to have to start talking about the 84 Tigers as far as comparing great teams and fast starts. The Tigers got off to a 35 and 5 start. And the Cubs have gotten off to a historic start in their franchise's history. They've scored 98 more runs than they've allowed 28 games into the season. One and two the count on Martin he struck out his first time up. Got a piece. They're seven games up in the division buck they've got a seven game lead in the division on the 6th of May. Yeah and they've gone into Pittsburgh and St. Louis and played them very well yeah. and those teams were all competitive last year and now the Cubs have separated themselves from the rest of the pack. Swing and a miss out number two. One of the rare high pitches that Maeda has thrown tonight a high fastball gets Russell Martin. He just elevates his pitch right at the top of the zone and with two strikes you got to try to protect four seam fastball upstairs. Strikeout number four for Maeda. And with two down to the bases empty, here's Ryan Goins. Swung at the first pitch he saw his first time up and lifted a fly ball to left field. Tulowitzki expected to be back in there at shortstop tomorrow against Clayton Kershaw. You would figure that Darwin Barney, the right handed batter, would get the start against Kershaw as the second baseman, and that Goins would get a day off. Kershaw has never faced the Blue Jays. 
Troy Tulowitzki has faced him a lot. He's got 63 at bats, 17 hits, and he's hit three home runs against the Dodgers lefty. So when John Gibbons decided which day to give Tulowitzki off, obviously you want him in there against Clayton Kershaw. Outside ball three. Given said there's nothing physically wrong with Tulowitzki. He wouldn't even call it like a mental health day. He just said, giving him a day. That the plan was always to give him a day every now and again to try to keep him fresh and healthy. And there's a four pitch walk. That'll bring up Darwin Barney, who has the only hit of the night. For the Blue Jays thus far, but he didn't last long out there. He was thrown out by Yasiel Puig trying to stretch it into a double. Fourth outfield assist of the season for Puig, who has an absolute cannon for an arm. There was a time when you could name seven or eight right fielders in the game who had arms like that. Not as many anymore. But back when you played Buck, you had Dave Parker, Ellis Valentine, Jesse Barfield, Al Dwight Cowans. Evans, Al Cowens. Yeah, there were several yeah. that had arms of this caliber, and now it's a rarity to see anybody that throws with that type of accuracy or arm strength. I want to the count on Barney and the throw to first. If you had to pick a right fielder in your time in baseball who had the strongest arm, it could in all the years you've been, is there one you can separate from everybody else? I think Jesse Barfield had yeah. the strongest arm. Al Collins was right there with him, but of course Valentine had a terrific arm for the Expos. Clemente had a great arm, and he was very accurate as well. Al Kaline was probably the best throwing right fielder I'd ever seen, but he was accurate, quick release, everything was one hop on the money. Oh, and two the count on Barney. Short lead at first by Goins. I'll tell you who had a great arm, and not many people realize it was Reggie Jackson. He could really throw, especially early in his career. And he worked hard as his craft. Strike three called, and the inning is over. Maeda is at the top of his game. So's Marcus Stroman. Nothing but zeros through five. Presented by Rogers. Now arrive early. Gates open at 11 a.m. The first 20,000 will receive a Russell Martin blue replica jersey presented by Rogers. Be sure to visit the 200 level WestJet flight deck and check out our mom's oasis. Dan, I may slip away for that. <laughs> Sounds like a good idea, Hazel.
Top of the sixth inning, no score at Rogers Center. The Dodgers and Blue Jays in the first game of a three game weekend series that'll take you through Mother's Day before the Blue Jays head out on the road to take on the Giants, and then they'll meet up with the Texas Rangers again. Three game series in San Francisco, Monday to Wednesday, day off Thursday, then three games in Arlington next weekend. Then back home just for a quick three game homestand with Tampa Bay coming to town. Top of the order for the Dodgers here in the sixth Utley, Seeger, and Turner. Good change up there from Stroman. When you look at pitchers, I always judge pitchers by how few pitches they throw per inning. And Marcus Stroman is among the best in baseball in that department. He's fourth in the majors, averaging just 13.8 pitches per inning. I think the reason that's important is because hitters don't have much information. They're seeing very few pitches from Stroman, so you never really get a read. You don't see any patterns develop. To give you an idea who the best is, it's Clayton Kershaw. 13.4 pitches per inning. If you could save a couple of pitches per inning, you can pitch an extra inning. You can get deeper into the game, which is one of Stroman's major goals every time. Was it you were telling me a story a couple of days ago? Was it Jack Morris you were telling me said that the best way to pick up wins is just hang around longer than the other guy does? That's what he told uh, Pat Henkin when Henkin was a young pitcher and Morris joined the Blue Jays. He said, "Kid, you know how you win in this league? You stay out there longer than yep. the other guy." Morris did that. Ball four, leadoff walk to Utley. As we get an update now with Jamie. Team with the worst bullpen in baseball, and it ain't even close. The Reds will take all of the cushion they can get. Charged by Barney, spin and flip to go. It's on to first, double play. That'll take care of a leadoff walk. Darwin Barney and Ryan Goins are always working together. Whether one of them starting or the other one's an extra man, but here they team up to turn a nifty double play. Of course, the guy sliding at second is Chase Utley, the guy that caused the rule to change at second. And Utley with a very aggressive slide, but Bowens is able to dance around the slide and complete the double play. So, just like that, two down. Nobody on it. Here's Justin Turner, one for two. Blue Jays have the luxury of having three middle infielders who are all outstanding defensive players. So when Tulowitzki gets a night off and both Barney and Goins are in there, two great defenders. Pitch over the inside edge for a strike, one and one. Barney can play second, short, and third. Goins was a natural shortstop coming up. He's made the transition to second as seamlessly as anybody I've ever seen. Stroman a little extra on the leg kick there on the follow through of that pitch. Troy Tulowitzki, on the other hand, has only been a shortstop. It's the only position he ever wanted to play. Got the number on his back to prove it, too. We're at number two, Derek Jeter's number. One, two. Good location there. You can see that's a, an awkward swing from a guy who's got a pretty good bat, Justin Turner. Awkward is a good word. <laughs> <laughs> I, emergency? I, I think yeah. that was an emergency yeah, was hack, an emergency. and there's probably some Snickers on yeah. the Dodger bench. <laughs> Soft liner into right, drops in for a base hit. New Honda Civic now available with Turbo, the 2016 North American Car of the Year. A base runner for the Dodgers with two down here in the sixth inning. Justin Turner's two for three. There has only been, if my scorecard is telling me the truth, there's only been one runner in scoring position in this game. Josh Donaldson. 
when he stole second in the first inning. Nobody else has made it to second base for either team. Adrian Gonzalez crosses up the defense. Base hit into left center field, and now Turner's in scoring position on the base hit. I know everybody utilizes the shifts, but I've said this before about the Blue Jays' infield. When you have exceptional defenders, you're handicapping yourself when you shift so dramatically. When you have guys that have exceptional range, I think you're giving away your advantage by playing the exaggerated shifts. Play them straight away and let them get to those balls. You know what's interesting is every team has the same information in terms of where balls are hit but not every team shifts the same amount obviously the, the Rays and the Astros shift much more than other teams. So teams are making different decisions based on the same information because they don't have the same athletes right. when you have great athletes you can adjust your shifts accordingly they don't have to be as dramatic. Puig is over two, two ground balls to short. First and second, two down here in the sixth inning. Throw down to second and diving back in head first is Turner. There are teams, a couple of them, where if the count favors, let's say, the hitter, they shift in a certain way, and then if the count goes the other way, They'll switch two defenders because they think now he's more likely to hit the ball the other way. So we'll move our shortstop back over to the left side and our third baseman across because our shortstop's got a better glove. I mean, you'll see guys crisscrossing in the middle of an at bat. And Puig has hit three ground balls to short tonight. Forced the runner at second to win the inning. Dodgers leave a couple of men on. Top of the order for the Blue Jays coming up in the bottom of the sixth. into one odds they've done it Leicester City are first time champions of the Barclays Premier League see Captain Wes Morgan in the Foxes holds one of the most prestigious trophies in all of sport following their match against Everton that's Saturday at 12 Eastern 9 a.m. Pacific time on Sportsnet 360 and Sportsnet now. Hey so thank you a big crowd here at Rogers Center tonight 42,304 to see the first game of this series and we're told that both tomorrow and Sunday are virtual sellouts. So a big weekend here. Now, pitchers duel tonight as Michael Saunders takes a pitch of the knees for a called strike. The Dodgers haven't been to Rogers Center since 2013, and when everybody saw the scheduled pitching matchups with Maeda going tonight, Clayton Kershaw tomorrow, you can bet baseball fans and fans in general wanted to see the Dodgers, knowing they get to see the two best Dodger pitchers. And I don't know that interleague play has quite the luster it once did, but they're still the Dodgers. They're still one of those iconic franchises 
whether it's Brooklyn Los Angeles they've had so many of the game's great players. One of their greats is sitting in the booth right to our right. One of their broadcasters Oral Hershiser who still holds the record for 59 consecutive scoreless innings back in 1988. Won the National League Championship Series MVP, won World Series MVP that year, the last time the Dodgers were in the World Series. There's the Bulldog with Nomar Garcia Parra sitting right beside him, another member of the Dodger broadcasting team. A couple team. of color analysts and both very good players when they played, but Hershiser broke Don Drysdale's record for consecutive scoreless innings pitched. Yeah. One and two, the count on Saunders. He's over two tonight. On the appeal, he didn't go. Of course, I grew up in Northern California, and I hated the Dodgers. <laughs> <laughs> I was a giant fan all the way, and of course, all the Dodger fans, they love to listen to Vin Scully and Jerry Doggett. And I grew up with Lon Simmons and Russ Hodges, two great announcers for the Giants. This is Vin Scully's final year, his 67th and final year. Broadcasting Dodger baseball. Vin is 88 years of age, does all the home games and does the road games in San Diego and San Francisco. Does not do any other road games other than that, but uh, the best there's ever been, the best there ever will be calling the baseball games. He's calling it a career after 67 years. He did Jackie Robinson games in Brooklyn. He has seen it all. Swing and a miss, one down. Great slider. Just off the inside edge, you mentioned Jackie Robinson, and of course he broke into the major leagues with the Brooklyn Dodgers. And Vince Scully started his career in 1950, but this is Jackie Robinson's contract. And look at the salary with Montreal: $800 a month to play with the Montreal Royals. And there's Jackie R. Robinson's signature on that contract. Jack Roosevelt Robinson. Here's Josh Donaldson. There's a display here at Rogers Center. A couple of people who own those contracts. And they had them on display in New York, and with the Dodgers coming here to Toronto, they brought them up here for apparently for Dodger fans to see. So they're here at Rogers Center this weekend. Maeda and Stroman are both cruising along. Maeda's at 85 pitches right now. He has pitched extremely well. He's gone between six and seven innings in his starts this year. He's never gone less than six. He's never gone more than seven. That's one of the rare pitches that got away from him. He was trying to throw that pitch away to Donaldson and missed all the way across the plate. Of course, any time you do that to either Donaldson, Bautista, or Encarnacion, you're flirting with danger. You make a mistake. The one of these guys and there could be a run on the board very quickly. 3 0. Breaking ball on 3 0. Donaldson didn't look like he was taking all the way. It looked like he just decided to take that pitch and it's 3 and 1. No he wasn't taking it all. He was looking for a fastball and took the slider. The most pitches Maeda's thrown in a game this year 101. At 87 now. Here in the bottom of the sixth. Donaldson had dropped the bat thinking he was headed to first. Marvin Hudson, a home plate umpire, he called it kind of a late call. Donaldson thought the breaking ball was off the plate outside. Looked like it might have caught the corner. So Maeda battles back to three and two. And now walks him. This copyrighted telecast is presented by Authority of Rogers Blue Jays Baseball Partnership and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of Rogers Blue Jays Baseball Partnership. Couple of 500 teams opening up a series here in Toronto. The Dodgers are 14 and 14. The Blue Jays are 15 and 15. Difference is the Dodgers are in a three-way tie for the lead in their division. Nobody's better than 500 right now, 
in the National League West. If I'm Jose Bautista right now, I'm looking for a first pitch fastball. You remember Donaldson had a stolen base on a first pitch curveball way back in the first inning. And he, I just think Maeda is not going to throw that big looping breaking ball early in this at bat. Cut on and fouled back by Bautista. Just one hit tonight for the Blue Jays. A single by Darwin Barney back in the third. Thrown out trying to stretch it into a double. Yasiel Puig throwing him out. Dave Roberts, one of the good guys in baseball and probably the owner of the most famous stolen base in baseball history, would you say? 2004. Playing for the Red Sox, stole a base with Mariano Rivera on the mound. The Red Sox were down in that series three games to none, came all the way back to win it. And Dave Roberts is a hero in Boston to this day. He was a good player and did a lot more than just steal that one base. Yes, he was. Outfielder with very good speed would put the ball in play, try to use that speed to his advantage. 1-1. One, one. Well, you can count on one hand the number of times Maeda's come inside to a right-handed batter. Team. Yeah, he just hasn't come inside. He knows this is a very powerful team, and he has made up his mind. If they hit a home run off me, it's going to be a pitch away. There, fouled off by Bautista, two and two. It's amazing how many times, say it's a two and two count, and then you look at pitch tracks, and none of the four pitches were in the strike zone. <laughs> he's right on the edges, but he's close enough where they have to swing it. Yeah, and it looks inviting because it's not 98, it's 90, 91. You feel like you can get to it, even though it's off the plate. Interesting where Grandel looked like he was going to set up high. And Maeda stepped off the mound with no intent of throwing to see if they change their pitch after this. Two two. Bautista takes it low. I think Maeda just stepped off because he didn't want to throw that high fastball. So he got another pitch through the slider and missed. You got to believe they're going to start the runner here. Nothing the Blue Jays have done works tonight. So roll the dice. Put a runner in motion. If Bautista hits it on the ground, you might open up a hole with Donaldson running. 12 runs a night ago, but Maeda shutting them down so far here tonight. Runner is going. And the pitch is belted. Deep left field. No doubt about it for Bautista. Mm -hmm. In his third at bat, recognized that he was probably going to get a slider. And he had that slider all zeroed in. And boy, did he smoke it. He squared it up and has given Strowman a two run lead here in the bottom of the sixth. For Bautista, RBIs 21 and 22 with his sixth home run. There's the slider grip. And Bautista with a full count. That ball just spins. Out over the plate that he didn't miss it. Well, he had thrown so many good sliders to the righties tonight. Fastball that he gets by Encarnacion. But he made a mistake. He left it up and over the plate. And Bautista with his sixth home run of the season to give the Blue Jays a two to nothing lead. It's only the third home run Maeda has allowed this season. Popped up by Encarnacion. Room in foul territory for Adrian Gonzalez. Two down. 
Bautista's home run might have been a home run and a half. <laughs> <laughs> Should get three for that instead of two. Wow. And that was a rocket to the second deck in left. And he had been scuffling lately, but he didn't miss that one. And that's all you need one swing of the bat in a game like this. Now the focus will return to Marcus Stroman when he heads back out for the top of the seven. Now that he's got a lead to work with. Two down and the base is empty for Justin Smoke, who has walked and flied out. Curveball bounced foul. Well, that shows you with Maeda, it's more about the location than the raw stuff. The stuff is good, but he's got to locate it to be successful. Well, and this is the first time he's walked four batters in a game. His previous high was three. That came in his third start against the Giants, but Donaldson with two walks at the table for Bautista. You know that's the way this team is. You remember a couple nights ago, Bautista drew a two-out walk and set the table for Encarnacion, who hit a two-run home run to tie it. A hundred pitches now for Maeda. There's activity in the bullpen. Curveball for a strike. The right-hander is Lewis Coleman. The left-hander is Adam Libertor. So Maeda at best gets through this inning if he can get smoke. If he can't get smoke, we'll probably see Coleman with a couple of righties due up next for the Blue Jays. But he gets smoke. Strikeout number seven. That'll end the inning. But it's a productive one. The first run scored of the night. Two of them on one swing of Jose Bautista's bat. Home run number six, and the Blue Jays have a two to nothing lead. Big leagues and check out a Blue Jays Acura luxury suite for a business meeting and a baseball game. Our account executives uh, will find the package that best suits your needs. 416-341-1635 or bluejays.com slash luxury suites. To the seventh inning at Rogers Center and Marcus Stroman has a lead. It is two to nothing Blue Jays after the home run by Jose Bautista. Stroman at 82 pitches entering the seventh. He'll face Grandal, Kendrick, and Peterson, six, seven, and eight in the Dodger lineup. Grandal tonight has struck out and lined out. Stroman has given up five hits through six innings. He's walked a couple and has struck out seven. The biggest out he got was getting Yasiel Puig to end the sixth with two men aboard. Right at the knees over the inside edge. Grandal did not like the call. That's where the catcher comes into play, where you probably said this a thousand times in your career. You can live with that one if your pitcher gets that one. Absolutely. And another ground ball. Goins. Blue Jays on Sportsnet. 
presented by the all-new Honda Civic, now available with Turbo, the 2016 North American Car of the Year. 19 outs for Marcus Stroma tonight. Ten of them have been ground outs. Seven of them have been strikeouts. One's been a line out and one's been a caught stealing. I know we've said it a couple of times before. Not a single out to the outfield yet in this game off Marcus Stroma. He's given up a few hits here and there but you really have to string hits together against him when he pitches this well when he keeps the ball down as much as he has tonight. Kenta Maeda has allowed two runs on two hits of course the two run home run by Bautista the Blue Jays won 93 games last year. The fewest hits in a win for the Blue Jays was four. They beat the Texas Rangers three to two on just four hits right here at Rogers Center last June 28 behind Drew Hutchison. One two to Kendrick misses a little bit inside. Lewis Coleman still up in the pen so it looks like he'll come on for the bottom of the seventh at least to face a couple of right handed batters and there's another strikeout number eight for Stroman. Stroman's got the Dodger hitters talking to themselves because he's used such a wide assortment of pitches to record the strikeouts. He's won off his career high. He had nine strikeouts in his last outing at Tampa Bay in that 5 1 win over the race. He has struck out Jock Peterson both times that he's faced him tonight. Shift on Barney Goins. Smoke all on the right side as Stroman paints the outside edge for a strike. Stroman has traded in a 94 95 mile an hour four seamer for about a 92 mile an hour two seamer, and the results have been outstanding. You know, and you know, Dan, it's not easy just to say, okay, now I'm going to throw a two seamer. I mean, a lot of guys would love to throw a sinking fastball, but can't. But Marcus has the ability to manipulate the baseball whether it's a fastball or a breaking ball and he can really spin it and he got away from that early in the season but Pete Walker got him back on track just outside and a lot of young pitchers want to blow people away they want as many strikeouts swings and misses as they can and he's still piling up a decent number of strikeouts but a lot of guys it's almost an ego thing when you're young and you can throw hard you just want to go get them. One two and a liner in the left center field off the bat of Peterson Pilar a sliding stop shy of the track but Peterson in there with a double. Just the fifth double of the season for Doc Peterson but he stayed on that pitch didn't try to do too much. This is a cutter. And you can see it just kind of spun out over the plate didn't have an awful lot of movement on it and Peterson drilled it into center. No activity in the Blue Jays pen Stroman's at 94 pitches with two down here in the seventh and the batter was Carl Crawford one for two. I think both Marcus Stroman and Aaron Sanchez have made up their mind to when they take the mound they're going to pitch eight nine innings that's their goal every time they go out. And because they've been economical on their pitch counts they've had a chance to do that fly ball left center field it is in there for a base hit and a run will score Crawford on his way to second so back to back two out doubles and it's two to one just the third RBI of the season for Carl Crawford that's going to get the Blue Jays up and working so Crawford took a page out of Jock Peterson's book went the other way and drilled a two out double then knocks in the first Dodger run and just like that it's a two one ball game. So the tying run now at second base. And Chase Utley is the batter. Double of strikeouts and a walk tonight. Stroma trying to get this elusive third out here in the seventh inning. It's a call on the outside edge. Gavin Floyd has started throwing. 
And Chad Gerardo is going to join him. No Cecil. I think John Gibbons has made a point of saying he's going to back off Cecil a little bit and use him in less leverage situations. So that's why they call up Gerardo here. And Gerardo throws a lot of strikes. He's not as experienced, obviously, but Dodgers haven't seen him. Might throw him in there for a lefty or two in this situation. If things had gone well from the outset this year, that's Storin and Cecil. Yeah. Right? But it's Floyd and Gerardo right now. So there may have been a, a change in the pecking order in that bullpen. Up the middle, a base hit for Utley. Crawford around third. And he will score to tie the game. Three straight two out hits. And that two run lead evaporated in a hurry. Chase Utley driving in his ninth of the season. And they go right back up the middle again. Two opposite field doubles and Utley a single back up the middle. And Pete Walker, the pitching coach, is out to the mound. Boy, Stroman just sailing along. Ground out and a strikeout here to start the seventh. And then double, double, single to tie the game. And John Gibbons wants to know if they're ready down there in the bullpen. Stroman will stay, and Corey Seeger will be the batter. He's 0 for 2 with a walk. A 2 2 tie. The Dodgers now with eight hits tonight. The Blue Jays with only two, but one of them is that two run home run by Jose Bautista. You think this is last batter for Stroman one way or the other. Either he gets him and ends the inning and a reliever gets a fresh start in the eighth, or if he loses him, John Gibbons makes a move to the pen. So two in the bottom of the six for the Blue Jays and the Dodgers get him right back here in the top of the seventh. Two and two. Big crowd here and they're trying to encourage Stroman and help him get out of this inning. Full count and now Utley gets a running start. With a dangerous hitter and Justin Turner waiting on deck. Smoke back pedals, runner goes, pitch fouled off. When you look at this inning and the way it developed, Grandel grounded out to short, Kendrick struck out, and then Jock Peterson did a good job of going the other way to start the inning with that two out double and then Cochran. Followed suit. And the veteran Chase Utley, just his ninth RBI of the season, has tied it up. Everything with two outs and nobody on. There goes Utley again, and the 3 2 swung on and grounded to Goins. He'll go across the diamond to end the inning. But the Dodgers have tied it a couple of two out run producing hits seventh inning stretch tied in two.
contest is now on. Enter for your chance to cheer on your Blue Jays in Boston with WestJet. Go to bluejays.com slash WestJet. Fly away to enter. Going bottom seven at Rogers Center, but a brand new ball game. It is tied at two out of the Dodger Pen Cubs right hander, Lewis Coleman, who has spent part of each of the last five years with the Kansas City Royals, signed with the Dodgers in the offseason. He is 30 years of age. And he can be a handful for right handed batters. He's tall, kind of a, a lanky guy, and comes at you from that angle. That crossfire delivery is the Dodgers signed him late in the offseason. He didn't sign until the 19th of February. Got it to start a spring training. Oh, one to Pilar way outside. So it looks like it's in the hands of the bullpens. Maeda out after six, giving up two. Gavin Floyd still throwing. You would think that Stroman's night is done. Tie game here in the bottom of the seventh. Pilar has struck out and grounded out tonight. Right, he's hitting just 115 against Coleman. He's managed just three hits and 26 at bats. On the edge, two and two. He's probably in here to handle these two righties, and if they get aboard, then you got a lefty down there for Goins. Libertor throwing again. Russell Martin waiting on deck. There's Andy Burns, who was just summoned from Buffalo today as Pilar fights it off. Burns is a right handed batter, so if Dave Roberts went to the lefty, Burns could pinch it for Goins. Yeah, and I'm sure that's where he was given the heads up hey, get loose, get yourself a bat, take a few swings up underneath. And now John Gibbons checking with his bench coach, DeMarlo Hale, saying about matchups and availabilities. In the air to shallow left. And the shortstop Seeger will make the catch for the first out. Burns is a, a versatile guy, can play second, short, and third. They like his bat, decent speed. And again, with some games looming in the National League Park in San Francisco this week, he figures to get some use out there. He's played first base, he's played left field, and they bounced him all over the diamond in Buffalo. and. They used him everywhere in spring training too with this kind of role in mind. Russell Martin has struck out twice tonight. Told a story before the game about the first time he ever caught Clayton Kershaw, who will pitch tomorrow against the Blue Jays. Kershaw was 18 years of age in his first season in camp, spring training game. And Martin thinks the hitter was Sean Casey, a good veteran left handed batter. And Martin said the first pitch came in at 96. And then the second one was the big Clayton Kershaw curveball. And he said Casey turned around to him and said, Who is this kid? And he's not going to make the team? And Martin said from day one, obviously the stuff was outstanding. But that the attention to detail, the work ethic, all took Kershaw to another level. Back then, Kershaw didn't have a slider. He has really brought that slider up to the level of the fastball and the curveball, so that he's got three plus pitches. Kershaw is just 28 years old. Blue Jays will have their hands full tomorrow. And that's why this game is so important. You're playing an opening game of a three game series. You got Maeda on the mound. He's out of the game now, and it's a 2 2 game. And 
you really want to win this one and then take your chances tomorrow and scratch and claw. Maybe you can beat Kershaw as well. 3 2. Will hug the line for a while and eventually roll foul. Stroman still sitting in the dugout. Unhappy the way that the seventh inning ended after he got the first two outs, double double single to tie the game. And none of them cheapies, all legitimate hits, well hit balls. Gavin Floyd still up in the pen. So you would think Floyd is coming in. Stroman will often stick around after he's out of the game and keep watching more than most. Yeah, you can see his teammates there, yeah. congratulating him for the seven innings, and he won't be pleased about that last inning. Three, two. That slider stayed inside, and Russell had to fight it off. It was going to be a strike, but he was looking for the breaking ball away. Better than 42,000 here on this Friday night at Rogers Center. And they saw a great pitcher's duel into the sixth inning before both teams got on the board. Bottom six and then top seven. Martin a roller to short. Two down. Now we'll see how both managers play it. Goins is coming to the plate. Will we see Dave Roberts in a pitching change? Well, here and comes yep. Roberts. Yep, he's got the lefty ready, and this is kind of interesting. I mean, if John Gibbons wanted to, he could counter with Troy Tulowitzki right here, and put the shortstop back in the game. But there's the call to the bullpen, and Coleman gets his two men, Pilar and Martin. So Coleman will make his way out of the game and the left hander Adam Libertor is on his way in. We'll wait and see who John Gibbons wants to hit against him. Rick Jacoby talking to Ryan Goins right now. We'll have to see how the Blue Jays decide to play this out after the pitching change by the Dodgers. Jays anywhere. Download the Sportsnet app and stay up to speed with the live pitch tracker, in-depth stats, and exclusive video highlights, plus live stream on the go. Download for free today. Dan. Hazel, thank you. A pitching change here at Rogers Center. Left-hander Adam Libertor, who started the year in the minors, was called up on the 14th of April, and as you can see, he's done a really nice job for the Dodgers. He was with them for part of last season as well. And John Gibbons electing to leave Ryan Goins in a hit bump. Goins is three for 19 against lefties this year. You think if there had been some some action, some traffic on the bases, maybe things are different? Yeah, I think so. You only have so many weapons to 
utilize Tulowitzki and Burns in this situation. And if you're going to use it, you might wait until you have a runner on, maybe a runner in scoring position. But I just think he just wants to leave Goins in there and save the others for a better situation. Ball and a strike. Lefty lefty matchup here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Hit him. <laughs> Veteran Joe Blanton is up in the pen now for the Dodgers. Blanton's done a nice job pitching out of their bullpen. He's made 12 appearances. He's given up just four hits in 11 and two thirds innings and has 10 strikeouts. So he's done a pretty good job pitching out of that bullpen. The former starter has made a pretty good adjustment. Now Darwin Barney. Libertor staying presumably because Michael Saunders is on deck another left handed batter. Blanton getting ready in case it gets to the Donaldson of Bautista and Carnacion part of the lineup. Barney with a base hit to right and he's been called out on strikes. Continues to swing a good bat whenever he's been given the opportunity to play, whether it was last September or early this year. His average right now at 316. Fights it off into right field, dropping for a base hit. Goins will stop at second, respecting the arm of Puig. Yeah, he thought about it and then he took a peek to see who was out in right field and re remembered that it was Puig. Barney with his second hit of the night. And Goen saying, okay, this is a little flare to right. I might be able to go to third. And then he looks up and Puig plays it on one hop and Goen wisely stays put. He's in scoring position. So now meeting on the mound as the Dodgers discuss. Michael Saunders and Rick Honeycutt, the longtime pitching coach of the Dodgers, are jogging out to the mound. Honeycutt has been pitching coach. This is his 11th season with the Dodgers. He's the fourth longest tenured pitching coach in baseball behind Dave Rigetti, Don Cooper of the White Sox, and Darren Balsley of the Padres. So Mattingly left the Dodgers and went to Miami, and Honeycutt stays with L.A. Had a terrific job. He had a long career as a pitcher, 21 seasons in the majors. Good to be left handed. He'll tell you that. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so Libertor and Saunders. With the go ahead run out at second base, two down on the bottom of the seventh. Saunders is over three. Michaels hit four home runs this season. Three of them have been against lefty pitching. So, despite the fact that he's hitting for a higher average against right handed pitchers, he's done some damage against lefty pitching. He's got two doubles and three home runs against lefties. Five of his seven hits have gone for extra bases. Gonzalez, the first baseman now, moving way behind the runner. Barney at first playing deep against the left hand hitting Saunders. And the 0 1 is in the dirt blocked by Grandal, the ball and a strike. Well, that's a nice play by Grandal. Obviously, you want to make sure these runners don't move up. Ball was 
in front of him and he has a real good approach here he goes down on one knee plays it off his chest protector and he had a good angle as he bent over to waist to keep that ball right close to home plate. Blue Jays trying to reclaim the lead here in the bottom of the seven. Goins was hit by a pitch. Barney with his second hit of the night, advancing Goins to second. Goins with decent speed. If Saunders comes up with a base hit to right, we're going to have all kinds of excitement. Because Goins will likely try to score on any base hit, and Puig will come up firing. The one, two. Chopped up the first baseline. It is foul. And the call actually made by the first base umpire. It's not his call till the ball reaches the bag. And I don't know if Marvin Hudson was blocked out by Saunders getting up the line. It was the right call, but it was not the umpire who's supposed to make the call who made the call. Yeah, the home plate umpire, this is his call, and you'll see a good angle on it here. Marvin Hudson gets in position and he's got a good look at that ball but he doesn't make the call James Hoy down at first makes the call and then Marvin Hudson just backed it up after the call was made by the first base umpire. So back to the plate for Saunders with a count one and two. really taking a lot of time in between pitches and I think it's put pressure on the catcher and certainly has gotten in the heads of the infielders but you can see how far away this ball is and Grandall instead of sliding over to block it just tried to catch it and it skips off his glove back to the backstop. But Libertor really deliberate taking his time and I think the infielders for the Dodgers they're just like come on let's throw it. Look at the third baseman. He has his glove on. Two in scoring position and a two and two count on Saunders. Libertor the set. High ball three. If Saunders reaches, Josh Donaldson would be next, and Joe Blanton would be coming in from the pen for the Dodgers. is out Libertor is out and Blanton's coming in to face Donaldson and that's why John Gibbons didn't burn the pinch hitter for Goins Libertor really not even close gives up a hit batter a single and walks Michael Saunders so he leaves without retiring a batter and now he look to Joe Blanton the veteran who's really throwing the ball well right now out of the bullpen he will inherit a difficult situation a base is loaded there are two outs but he's facing the reigning MVP.
Rogers customers get free VIP Blue Jays experiences like alumni meet and greet, seat upgrades, offers, and more with Game Plus, part of the MLB.com ballpark app. Learn more at bluejays.com slash game plus. Joe Bland enter the game for the Dodgers. The 13th appearance for the Dodgers, and we mentioned he's really throwing the ball well. Look at his batting average against right-handed batters, 083, and Josh Donaldson, the batter, he's 0 for 4, going head-to-head -head with Joe Blanton. Bases loaded, two down, tie game at the bottom of the seventh. And the pitch. And Donaldson pops it up. Foul territory, but room for Gonzalez, and the Blue Jays will leave the bases loaded. One pitch and one very, very big out for Joe Blanton and the Dodgers. Blue Jays right-hander Gavin Floyd comes out of the Blue Jay pen buck to make his 10th appearance of the season. Gavin Floyd has done a good job adjusting to the bullpen. He pitched out of the bullpen at the end of the season last year for Cleveland, and he was competing for a spot in the rotation in spring training. But one thing he has, and it's a very important weapon, is a nasty curveball. He can really rack up the strikeouts. You see his strikeouts per nine innings, 10. 03 for Gavin Floyd, and he's on in this 2 2 game. On to face the 3 4 5 hitters in the Dodgers lineup Justin Turner, Adriana Gonzalez, and Yasiel Puig. Turner couldn't check the swing. He is 2 for 3 tonight, has raised his average 14 points up to 264. Ground ball to short. Goins, not number one. Marcus Stroman was seven innings and was doing great until this until there were two outs in the seventh inning, Buck, and then three consecutive hits scoring both runs for the Dodgers. Yeah, two outs, and then he gave up a double to Peterson, double to Crawford, and Crawford drove in the first Dodger run, and then Chase Utley, the veteran, had an RBI single. To tie it up at 2 2. <laughs> Bottom of the order got to him. Number eight and nine, and then the leadoff man, Utley, tied it up. Dodgers with their 3 4 5 coming up top half of the eighth. Blue Jays will have their 3 4 5 coming up bottom half of the eighth. Floyd pitched very well in the spring, but Aaron Sanchez pitched a little bit better. Got the starting job, so Floyd starting the year in the bullpen. 
Curveball outside ball two. Two runs eight hits for the Dodgers two runs just three hits for the Blue Jays each team has left six. Foul back. Gonzalez has faced Floyd in the past He's one for five. I think John Gibbons is just trying to get somebody to take the bull by the horns out of that bullpen and step up and claim one of these spots late in the game. High fly ball to right center field but not very deep. They're both calling for it and they're going to bump into each other before Pilar makes the catch. Well, there's a big crowd here tonight and they're very vocal. Bautista had called for it. Pilar was waving his hands and they were both calling for it. And I don't think either one of them heard the other. But you see Bautista had his arm up. Pilar comes over. He calls for it. And then fortunately Pilar is able to make the catch as Bautista ran into him. But no harm no foul as they get the second out of the inning. Now Pui. Wow. That's. One of the issues Puig struggles with uh, sliders or breaking balls down in a way he just cannot lay off sometimes. Shaking his head at himself. Well, if you're Gavin Floyd, you got to throw it again. I mean, he went even close. This is his first at bat against Gavin Floyd, and we mentioned what a good curveball he has. It's hard, late break, tight spin. Fastball hit in the air to left center field. Saunders is there, and that's the inning. A good inning for Gavin Floyd. Time now for a Blue Jays Central update. Here are Jamie Campbell and Greg Zahn from the Samsung Broadcast Studio. Is brought to you by all new Honda Civic, the 2016 North American Car of the Year. In the sixth inning in a scoreless game with Josh Donaldson on base, Bautista gets a 3 2 slider that just sat out over the plate and he smoked it. Home run number six for Bautista. That put the Blue Jays up 2 to nothing. Jose hadn't homered since April 30th at Tampa Bay in a two run home run there, and this was a two run home run, but. The Dodgers came back and tied it in their half of the seventh. Bautista will take a strike to get the bottom of the eighth inning underway. He'll be followed by Encarnacion and then Smoke. Dodgers bullpen is quiet. Meanwhile, in the Blue Jays' pen, it's Drew Storm. It's very curious. It is. You would expect a sooner. Yes. Whether the Blue Jays score a run or not, you would expect a sooner. Yes. 
It is his inning, and obviously we don't know whether or not Osuna might not be available. I mean, there's a lot of things manager has to deal with, and you can see Osuna's just sitting back. And very interesting. High fly ball, center field. Not quite deep enough. A long, loud first out of the inning. Now remember, Osuna, he has pitched two days in a row. Remember, he came in in that eighth inning situation a couple of nights ago. He only threw five pitches, but it may be as simple as they don't want to pitch him three days in a row. He's pitched two in a row and three of the last four. So maybe that explains why Floyd was up earlier, storing up now. Osuna may not be available tonight. And Carnacion is 0 for 3. Gavin Floyd working the top of the eighth inning. We'll wait and see who's going to pitch the top of the ninth. Will it be Floyd or will it be Storin? And will it be tied or will the Blue Jays have the lead? Osuna pitched two in a row, but it was on Tuesday and Wednesday. So he's had an off day. Yeah. Oh, you're right. I'm sorry. Yesterday was Cinco de Mayo. Yes. <laughs> you're right. Forgive me. So he has had an off day. Obviously, didn't pitch in the 12 to 2 game. Three and one. So it is curious. And in that game, he threw just 16 pitches, and on Tuesday, only threw five. Carnacion lines one up the alley in the left center. This ball is down and will skip over the fence for a ground rule double. Let's check in with Jamie. Jamie, thank you. Meanwhile, the wheels are turning here, but Rogers Center, Ezekiel Carrera, is going to come out to run for Encarnacion. That's the go-ahead run with a one down here in the inning, and the batter is going to be Justin Smoke. Looks like they're going to put him on. So they would rather face the right hand hitting Kevin Pillar. Well, you got to imagine they're just setting up the double play. Smoke has a home run against Joe Blanton, and Pillar, right handed hitter, has gotten 0 for 3 at Blue Jays. With just four hits. The Dodgers have doubled them up in hits, they have eight. So Blanton will work to Pilar with runners at first and second, and Pilar's never face Joe Blanton. Pilar, a very hot hitter coming into the game tonight. 409 over his last 12 games. He's 0 for 3 tonight. Herrera at second, smoke at first with one down. Good ball game tonight here in the opening game of this series. It's been a week full of good yeah. ball games. <laughs> Everyone but last night has been a nail biter right down to the end. And Carnacion with the double, leaving for the pinch runner. And now Pilar hoping to drive in the go ahead run. There for a strike. Well, he got a good pitch to hit on that first pitch, but as I mentioned, this is the first time that Pilar has faced Blanton. Oh, one. Foul 
pulled back and a big cut by Pilar. Blue Jays are on a three game winning streak that matches their longest of the season. They have not had a four game winning streak yet this season. Whoever wins this game will be a game over 500. Whoever loses will be a game under 500. Donaldson in the seat where he often is. When he's getting ready to hit or getting somewhat close, he'll slide over near, doesn't even have to be when he's getting ready to hit, he'll slide over near John Gibbons and just tell him what's on his mind. Donaldson's always into the game. I don't care what the situation is. He's always got an idea. He'll sit down next to Gibbons and tell him what he's thinking about. One and two the count on Pilar. You got to remember the great arm in right field in this situation with Yasiel Puig. He threw out Darwin Barney back in the third inning. Very weak arm in left field. Carl Crawford does not throw well at all. And driven to left field. It is deep and it's gone. This crowd of better than 42,000 to its feet in Rogers Center with a three run home run to break the tie. Kevin Pillar has hit two of the hardest balls he's ever hit this week. He had a double off the top of the wall, and that was a very similar line drive, but this one carried out of the ballpark. For a three run home run. He is swinging it. Great extension on this fastball. It's in a good spot, but Pilar has really been confident at the plate. Easy, relaxed swing, and the ball jumped out of the ballpark. 5 2 Blue Jays. They're being out hit 8 to 5, but they've had two big home runs Bautista and now Pilar. Just keep wondering where the ceiling is for him. Every time you think you found it, he pushes through it to yeah. another level. I don't think you can set a ceiling for him because he doesn't set one for himself. Yep. He's a good learner. He makes adjustments. And after starting out his career, kind of buttoned his head with the manager, he's become a terrific learner. Swing and a miss, one and two on Russell Martin. Storen is still up in the pen for the Blue Jays. He'll be coming on in the ninth inning. A chance for a four game winning streak. Got the lead, lost the lead, got it back thanks to Kevin Pillar. Jays haven't won more than three in a row since they had a six game win streak last September. I think the biggest number for them is getting over 500. In the air down the right field line, Puig racing across the line into foul territory, can't get there in time. And Martin muttering to himself tonight. Joe Blanton, who's been awfully good, couldn't get it done here tonight. Bautista, the home run earlier in the game, and now Pilar electrifying 42,000 plus. Puig racing back, hauls it in for out number two. Right handers against Joe Blanton coming into this outing two for 24 that's the first home run he's given up to a right handed hitter he's only allowed one other home run and he had really been on a good run but Pilar spoiled that and Kevin hit a good pitch it was a sinker down and in but he has really relaxed his hands he trusts his hands to get the barrel to the ball and that ball jumped out of here. Here's Ryan Goins. 
The Dodgers will send up six seven and eight in their lineup Grandal Kendrick and Peterson in the top of the ninth. Ball and a strike. Well, more often than not, when they hit home runs, they win, and when they don't, they don't. And they've hit a couple of big home runs in this game. All five runs scoring on home runs. Puig again, and the inning is over. What a moment, though, here in the bottom of the eighth inning. Kevin Pillar. Nobody has a book on this guy right now. Drew Storm looks like he's making his way in and he is for the ninth inning. He's got a three run lead to work with thanks to his center fielder. Pilar drilling one to left for his second home run of the season and the Blue Jays have a three run lead. Prior to tonight's game, PlayStation provided us with a prediction of who they thought the Blue Jays player of the game would be. The video game version picked Michael Saunders. Tonight, the game suggested that Michael would go one for four. Actually, he was 0 for three with a walk, and he didn't hit a home run, didn't drive in a run, but he got on base and put him, the Blue Jays in a situation in the seventh with the bases loaded, but Joe Blanton was able to get out of it. And now Drew Storen comes on. Not Roberto Osuna. Remember earlier this year and late last year, Osuna had a little blister fingernail problem. We don't know what it is. Osuna's sitting out in the bullpen, but Storen was the guy warming up, so Osuna obviously unavailable tonight. Storen will try to pick up his second save of the season. Had that save against Boston on the 18th of April in Fenway. Russell Martin broke his glove. Yep. yep. The ball went right through the webbing of his glove and he <laughs> reached out to catch it. We've seen that happen three or four times yep. with the Blue Jays this year. Donaldson, Tulowitzki, and now Martin. This is a strange feeling for a catcher. You catch it in that webbing and it breaks right through the laces and Martin really surprised by that feeling but he's got a backup ready to go. You know the workload for Osuna wouldn't suggest that this is a rest but then again all we can do is speculate. We'll obviously be asked of John Gibbons post game. Not the kind of thing a manager wants to reveal pregame he doesn't want the other team to know. Outside ball three. And 
and he walks the leadoff man on four pitches. Time for now for a preview of what's coming up on Sportsnet Central. Here are Kennedy Bonka. Ivanka, thank you very much. A leadoff walk here issued by Drew Storen, and just like that, Jesse Chavez is throwing. Yeah, that makes you think that something's wrong with Osuna. He would be up for this game, obviously. They don't have the luxury of resting him. He's been their most yeah. consistent pitcher. And Chavez isn't messing around. He's getting loose in a hurry. There's five consecutive balls thrown by Storen. It has not been a good start to the season for Drew Storen, to say the least, although his last two outings, probably his best two of the season. Yeah. He's had two good outings. Those both came against the Texas Rangers. There's a strike. And the fans know it hasn't been a good start to Storen's run here with the Blue Jays, but like you said, he's throwing the ball better. And he located his pitches very well against the Rangers. Breaking ball for a strike, one and two. Blue Jays desperately hoping that Storm and Cecil can be the pitchers that they have been for the most part in the past rather than the guys who have struggled out of the gate. Absolutely and I think that's all John Gibbons can do is continue to run them out there and hope they sort things out. One two to Kendrick and a fly ball to center field Pilar one down <laughs> now Jack Peterson lots of power but even if he hits one out it's still a one run game he has struck out twice and doubled and scored. He got the two out double that started that seventh inning rally for the Dodgers when they tied it up. Scored two runs with two outs in the seventh. Shift is on. Three on the right side for the Blue Jays, although Goins pretty much up the middle as Peterson takes a strike. Clayton Kershaw and R.A. Dickey tomorrow afternoon in the second game of the series. Blue Jays looking for their first four game winning streak of the season and looking to get over the 500 mark. Three game show starts tomorrow at 12:30 Eastern Time. The 0-1. Just outside. Kevin Pillar with a big home run in the bottom of the eighth to give the Blue Jays the lead. His last three home runs, going back to last year, have all given the Blue Jays the lead. Smoke playing right behind the runner. Grandal at first as Peterson pops one up but this could be trouble it's going to drop in for a base hit and the Dodgers are going to bring the tying run to the plate here in the ninth inning. Now Carl Crawford will be the batter. He's the number nine hitter in the Dodger lineup but he's got a couple of hits including an RBI double tonight Chavez looks ready if needed out of the bullpen. Yeah and this is where a manager really has to be patient and you know you got to think OK this is a long season now I got to try to get Storm through this situation. If I get a ground ball double play all of a sudden he gets to save I don't have to use Chavez. But the temptation is he walked the guy a line out to ride the base hit. Temptation is to go get him, but Gibbons has given Storm this opportunity. Fastball foul to back, and it's 0 1. Storm, of course, has had success in his career as a closer. And a couple of highly publicized blown saves in the playoffs. He did open last year as the closer for the Nationals and when Jonathan Papelbon was acquired he was moved to the eighth inning. There's a ground ball to third. 
to second one, and that's all they're going to get. They will get the out. As second base umpire Chad Fairchild says it was on the transfer that the ball came out of the glove of Barney. Now this is interesting yeah. because the throw took Barney into the baseline. And remember with that new slide rule in effect you can see Peterson having a chat with his former teammate that's Bob Guerin the Dodgers bench coach. This is a tough throw for Barney the throw takes him into the path of the base runner. So that eliminates that interference double play. And the ball is coming out of his glove and I'm sure they're checking the Dodgers are whether or not that was a voluntary release or it popped out of his glove. And they're going to have a look at it. So they they could be looking to it whether his foot was on the bag when the ball was in the glove because he had to lean off to the side to make the catch. So now we're going to have a review. Not Jim Joyce is the crew chief. He's going to go put the headset on as the. I don't know if the Blue Jays have asked for this review because he didn't go after he had conversation with Dave Roberts. He didn't go to the headset. He waited until he spoke to John Gibbons. The replay review is powered by Samsung. Well, the only thing the Blue Jays could be asking for is whether the slide was legal. I think Gibbons was asking what may have been asking what is it the Dodgers are reviewing. He's got the ball in his glove and he's on the base. Yeah. So, so he's yeah. out there. And then it's on the transfer. So yeah. I, I think Fairchild got it exactly right yeah. on second base. And the contact made by the base runner was because Barney was drawn into the base path by the bat yeah. throw. Yeah. So he's not responsible for that contact. So this is huge obviously it's either first and third two outs or bases loaded one out. But the the call was out on the field and from what we've seen on the replay. It looks like that'll stand the ball is in his glove. And he's dragging his right foot across the base and I think his left toe was also on the base. And there's nothing untoward about the slide there by Peterson. Gibbons is unhappy. He just wants this he thing want, to. He doesn't want his pitcher standing out there exactly. for this long. That's why That's he wants problem. this yep. thing to pick up, taking yep. too long and you know what? store and standing around. You know what? He's right. Absolutely and, he's and, right. And all 30, not just him, all 30 managers are right. All right. And the answer is out at second. And so I think each team review. The first call. The first call is out at second. The second call is safe at first, meaning there was nothing illegal about the slide of Jock Peterson. So, so both teams asked for a review. Neither one paid off, and it is what it appeared to be on the field. So it's a fielder's choice, two down. And back to the top of the order for Chase Utley. The Dodgers are down to their final out, but on the flip side of the coin, one swing of the bat can still tie the game. And Utley and Storm have gone head to head a lot. Utley playing for the Phillies, Storm playing for the Nationals, and Utley's three for six against Drew Storm. Shift is on for the Blue Jays. 5 2 with two down in the ninth inning. Runner will go from first as the pitch is fouled off. The Blue Jays will concede the bag at second base. They don't. Care all that much about that. The only way it could hurt them is if there's some sort of a chopper on the infield where the only play they might have would be to force the runner at second. But they would rather have smoke playing deep at first and cutting off a potential extra base hit from Utley down the line. Yeah, you don't want to vacate a defensive position to cover second. One ball, one strike. Other than last night, very little has come easily for this team this year. Huge hit in the bottom of the eighth for Kevin Pillar, but two men on for the Dodgers in the top of the ninth. There's 
There goes the runner. And Utley's going to try to bunt his way aboard, and he will. So he's just trying to extend the inning, giving what the defense allows him, and that's what the shift will do. Oh, what a heads up play by the veteran Chase Utley. He just squared around. There wasn't any real surprise element to it. He just squares around and makes sure he bunts it on the ground, gets it past the pitcher, and once he does that, it's academic. That'll load the bases. So now the tying run is at first, and the go ahead run is at the plate. Corey Seeger. Checking on the progress. Well, I'm not sure because Chavez has been ready for a long time. And so. there's no left hander warming up. Yeah. Chavez has been ready. And Osuna continues to sit in the back of the bullpen. So Storen's given up two hits in this inning, but one was a bloop and one was a bunt. The only thing he's really done wrong was the four pitch walk to the first batter. But it has worked itself into a bases loaded situation. And a very nervous ninth inning here at Rogers Center. Fly ball left field. Saunders it's playable and the game is over. They survive that nervous ninth inning. And the Blue Jays have themselves their first four game winning streak of the season. Storm picks up the save. Kevin Pilar with a game winning home run. Bautista hit a two run shot earlier in the ball game to give them the lead. Conor had a one out double to start that eighth inning rally and a big win for the Blue Jays to take the first game in this Dodgers series with Clayton Kershaw going to the mound tomorrow. And they move over 500 in the process to 16 and 15. Kevin Pillar with a big hit. Drew Storen survives the ninth and the Blue Jays beat the Dodgers 5 to 2. Let's send you back to the studio. Sportsnet Central with Ken and Ivanka.